Hey guys, this is Folygon, here with your daily dose of ZBrush and work motivation. This is part two of our blonde sweater girl ZBrush speed sculpt. If you haven't seen part one yet, click the link in the description below to find that and watch it. Come on back when you're finished and go ahead and check this video out. All right, let's jump right in here. No poop sandwich talk this time, I promise. I'll just talk a little about this sculpt as I go through it. All right, so for the first part of this video, I look at the ear in depth and I actually go ahead and I've, I've had those placeholder ears up there for the entire part one of this video, if, you, if you've already seen that. So I go through here and I actually sculpt the ear. So this is a this is a pretty good tutorial kind of video as well. If you've never sculpted an ear, this is kind of a good uh, a good guideline that you can follow as far as shape language and what all needs to be there. Obviously, this is sped up, so it might be a little harder to follow along. And I would highly recommend that you use real ears for reference. Just go ahead and Google images of ears, female, men ears. You know, get a lot of different references and use those to sculpt an ear. Remember that it's never a good idea to use someone else's sculpt as a reference over a, a real life reference. So sure, I have an ear here and you could use this as a reference and I would recommend using it as a reference for your sculpt just because sometimes it's easier as I'm turning it around, you can see different angles, get an idea that way of some of the other shapes that are going on there. See how I sculpted it. So it's, it's a good reference in that sense, but I make mistakes and other people make mistakes and I am copying what I see in real life. When you copy what someone else copied from real life, you're kind of, you're starting to play like telephone, right? I copied what I saw, now you're copying what, what you saw from me. So we're starting to lose information as we go down the track. Always use real life as your kind of primary reference and then once you learn more and get more comfortable, you can absolutely use other people's stuff for reference as well. And I'm just real quick jumping back up to those ears to make uh, the what, what I like to call the plunger shape around the back. So I do an, a quick extract uh, like I did for the dress to get these eyebrows and then I just slice the shapes and then I uh, z mesh them really low just to, just to get the basic shape there. And then I throw a skin shade four on there, I believe. If you're looking at the eyes and you're thinking, wow, they look a lot different from part one, you would be absolutely correct. That's because I painted them actually off camera. It was about 10 minutes of footage. I was, I was sculpting for a while and I hadn't realized that I hadn't started recording and I didn't really feel like painting the eyes again. I'm sure in the future I will be going more in depth showing you how, to, how I paint my eyes and uh, going, going through essentially a tutorial style video where it's not sped up, where you can kind of see exactly how to do it and get a step-by-step -step process. For my eyelashes here, I'm doing something, I, w I wouldn't say a little different than what I normally do because I'm always trying new things like I've said in the past. I'm trying to find new ways to do stuff. So instead of what you saw me do there at first was use that AccuCurve mu uh, move brush, it might have been a snake hook. It's pretty much the same thing. But what I did there was I pulled out the eyelashes and then I went back and undid that and said, let's try something new here. Let's add in separate geometry for each lash and just try and get a, a different, more thick lash, a, a different stylized look and appeal. So that's what we're getting right here. In the first episode, I extracted that that sweater or it looks kind of like a dress right now, but I, I extracted that sweater around her. And you're gonna see me messing with that a bunch as we go through here. With that, that sweater, with that dress, when you're extracting a shape like that, you're gonna get some weird poly loops in the middle that I wanted to mention real fast. What I like to do with that is just go ahead and control shift click that inner portion, and then you can go ahead and just delete hidden once you flip around your selection and then close holes. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help you out a lot in the long run, and unfortunately it happened so quick here in part one, uh, and I don't have it here as well, so I, I can't visually show you that. But if you've ever done an extraction before, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Doing another extract or extract for the hair up top. With the hair, what I do, well, I, I believe I end up trashing this mesh that I'm using because I thought it looked too poofy. It was uh, too much volume for what I was trying to go for. If you saw those strokes, I'm trying to get like this pulled back in a bun look. And obviously when something like that happens, you are having your hair pulled pretty taut, pretty tight against your head. And with the look that I had there, it was like too, too bubbled up, too poofy. So I ended up just trashing that and uh, redoing it and getting a much closer one, which is what you're seeing right here. This bun shape on top that I'm creating, it's this hairstyle that I saw online and I wanted to give it a try. So what I'm doing right now is just blocking in shapes for the hair. And then I'm gonna use the Macon hairbrush to kind of create these tubes on top of that that will exist as the actual hair that you will see. This shape right now is more of the hair that will be underneath that. You'll be able to see through it in some portions because the tubes don't cover every part of the head of the hair that's over top there. So this is kind of like the base underneath of those tubes that will exist. Again, throwing on that color because you're going to be able to notice. I've said this with eyes, I've said this with the face. When you paint the face, when you paint the eyes, even do a little black dot for a pupil, it helps you realize different, different shapes and different mistakes way faster than if it's like all this one single uh, AO color. So here I am throwing on some of those tubes, trying to curl them up under the hair so they're not super uh, pushed out towards the bottom. Adjusting the shape with the move brush after I place those in. So that's my essential guideline and structure for using any type of like tube brush. So if you're looking over on the left side, you see that stroke palette that I have open. All the way in the bottom left hand corner, there's that little checkered box and then there's this little slope in there that you'll see me adjust from time to time. That box is the size modifier that I have turned on for this Macon hairbrush right now. And what that size modifier box does with that slope, that curve that I have in there, is saying from the beginning of the brush stroke till the end of the brush stroke, go from larger to smaller. So you see that tapered look that we're getting in the hair. That's how I was able to accomplish that. And that's just up in your stroke palette. At the very bottom, you can open up that curved palette and uh, turn on your size modifier. I played around a lot with the hair in different shapes off of camera because after I got this hair complete, after I got everything that you're seeing right now into a place where I liked it, I started taking stuff away from it because in, in a sense, less was more here where I actually liked the shapes that I was getting more when there was less hair. And I liked the, the, less, the less amount of strokes from every other angle except the front view. Uh, from the front view, you're getting like these little hangy, hangy down strokes in the back that kind of show through. And I knew that that front view was going to be where I rendered from. So I ended up deciding to keep all those in there. From here on out, it's mainly just adding in the last few parts, adjusting proportions, and changing some shapes to fit the shape of this sweater that I found online. After that, all I do is take it into T-Pose or Transpose Master, adjust some shapes, some forms, and then from there I sculpt a few folds off of screen that unfortunately I don't show because uh, I wasn't recording at the time. I got halfway through after playing with some stuff and I, I just thought that it wouldn't be worth showing. In the future, I'll definitely be showing you how I sculpt folds and going more in depth on stuff like that. A little tactic to get a tattoo on a character that you're working on or maybe paint on the side of a mech. You can use the standard brush with a drag rectangle stroke and just set your alpha to whatever your tattoo you want. Um, and then with that, you can use your poly paint tool and draw that out. And then just press the Y key a couple times. And the Y key is the replay last stroke. So if you drag out that poly paint and you realize that you're getting softer edges towards the end, or maybe it's not 
exactly dark enough, just jam that Y key a couple times. And that can actually be used in anywhere if you make any kind of change. Unfortunately, the replay last stroke key also affects your camera. So if you sculpt a stroke, make a change with the camera, and then press that Y key, it will replay your last stroke, which was unfortunately your camera movement. And then you get really confused because your camera is spinning all around like a, like a madman. So hey, remember if you're using that replay last stroke, make your stroke. I, I like to use it with uh, damn standard or some other stuff if I'm trying to build a shape or a form that's really uh, precise and clean. I'll make it really light at first, build it up a few times with that Y key, and then uh, use the undo history to kind of flip back and forth between those, uh, those different varying levels to see what I like more. Question for you all before I go, would you be interested in seeing non-sped up versions of sculpts? Possibly multiple hour long videos where you can follow along and sculpt with me. Let me know down in the comments below. No, it will not be Bob Ross-esque where I paint happy little trees. <laughs> If you guys liked this video, please share it. It helps out a ton. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new. And I will see you next time.